Welcome to lesson one, area of parallelograms. Our objectives are to find the area of a parallelogram and then also to use area to solve for missing links in a parallelogram. Finding the area of a parallelogram is, is not very difficult. What's more important is really understanding the formula and understanding what is the and what is the height and understanding that that can change depending upon what you have. Down here we have a parallelogram and you'll notice that the base could be either the bottom or it could be and in a parallelogram these are congruent so these are equal so if you know one you know the other. Also notice that our height forms a perpendicular line with the base and you can tell that by the little right triangle that's here in the corner. That's how you know that something is perpendicular. Two lines meet they form a right triangle. Now I want you to notice this if I take a parallelogram and I turn it on its side, then I have two different bases and therefore I have a different height. So it's just something to keep in mind. If I were to mark this, this would now be my base and my height would have to come down and form a perpendicular with my new base right here. I could also call the top my new base because that line also forms a perpendicular with the top line. Keep this in mind when we're looking at our parallelograms and our examples. Okay, here's a little bit more understanding of the equation for area of a, of a parallelogram. So we all know that it's the same equation as that for a square or for a rectangle. We always multiply the base times the height. Now in the square, the base and the height are the same thing. So we can sometimes call a square as b squared. But typically it's always base times height. And again, remember that this slanted line here that's labeled a is not the height because it does not form a perpendicular with the base. So we have to be careful about that. A couple other things about is that the height is not always necessarily represented by drawing a line inside of our parallelogram. You can represent the height here with this dashed line on the outside. This dashed line can be moved to the inside and it would still be the same distance. So we can show height on the exterior of our parallelogram or on the interior, as long as whatever base we're using is perpendicular to the height. Down here in this bottom example, this shows both. So we have our perpendicular height here that coincides with this red bottom base, but we can also show it outside of our parallelogram and it still corresponds to this red base because it forms a 90 degree angle with that. And then here's a third example over here where our height looks a little bit strange. It actually is partially in and partially out, but in this case our two bases at the bottom and the top still form a perpendicular line to this height. So we can use that height as well. Let's go ahead and try some examples. We're going to start off with two basic examples where we just find the area and then we'll try two examples where we find a missing measure. Well, in this first example, it's fairly straightforward. You can see that our base is 15 and that our height is 5. Remember, it's not 7. So in order to find the area, we've identified the base as 15 and we've identified the height as 5. If we multiply those together, we get 75 and then make sure to include your units, centimeters squared. That's the area of this parallelogram. Now let's look at this other one. This base here goes along with this height on the outside. And we can see that the base is three centimeters and that the height is 18. Now I might know this diagonal slant side here, but that doesn't matter, that doesn't help me for my area. So again, in order to find the area, we take the base, which is 3, times the height, which is 18. And that gives us 54 centimeters squared. So pretty straightforward on the area. Now let's go ahead and use what we know in order to find missing measures. And here's where the problem solving comes into play. Here's our shape. And we need to find H in this shape. We need to find that. Well, if we look at that, we can see that that would be a height if we knew this base, and we do. So with this base times height would give us our area, but we don't know the area. So 
is a little bit confusing, but notice that we have some other measures too. Now remember that any of these sides can be used as a base if we have the perpendicular height. Well, this h and this base, we don't have enough information here. But if you'll notice down here, we know that this base is 0.4, this height is 0.3, we can find the area. So let's go ahead and find the area. So the area of this rect or of this parallelogram, sort of a rectangle, is 0.4 times 0.3. You multiply those together, we get 0.12, and whatever the units are squared. Okay, so we know the area, but that still doesn't help us find h, right? Well, remember that this is the area no matter what. And as I said before, we can turn this so that this 0.5 is our new base. We'll go ahead and label that. This becomes our new base that corresponds to this height. Well, think about this. Our equation for area is just base times height. If I know two of these three variables, I can always solve for the third. Well, now I know what the area is of this parallelogram. It's 0.12. I also know what the base is. If I use that base, it's 0.5. So now I can use division and I can solve to find that height. So if I divide these both by 0.5 and solve, I get 0.12 divided by 0.5, which gives me 0.24. And again, this is not squared because this is just a linear dimension, so this is just 0.24 units. And that is how I solve to finding missing measure. So when you're problem solving, you always want to think to yourself, what do I have? What can I figure out? And then can I take what I figured out and use it then to find the missing measure? So in all these problems, the key is going to be find the area first of the parallelogram and use that to work backwards to find the missing measure. Let's try one more example. All right, we want to find the missing measure. And in this example, it's not listed, but the missing measure is going to be the dotted line DE. So the line segment DE is what we want to find here. Okay, well, here we have a base. We don't have any other heights. That's what we're trying to find. So this base and this height, we're missing too much information. We have a slant here. If I knew this portion of the right triangle, I could use Pythagorean theorem to find this. But the problem is, we don't know that this dashed line bisects AB perfectly. So we can't assume that half of 6.8 is this portion. So that's not going to work. Remember what I said. If we can find the area of this parallelogram, then we can use that to help us find missing measures. Well, let's see if we can find the area. Well, we don't have this height going this way for this base. What about these other sides? 9.2 is a base. Do we have a height? And if you'll notice here, we do. 3.4 inches forms a perpendicular with that base 9.2. So what I can do is I can find the area. So my area is going to be base, which is 9.2, times my height, which is 3.4. And that gives me an area of 9.2 times 3.4, 31.28. And these are inches squared. Okay, so that's good. I now have the area. I can probably work backwards to find this height, this DE because I have a base. So let's work backwards. Well, I know my area, so we're going to use our area equals base times height formula, and our area is 31.28. And I have a new base here of 6.8, and I just need to find h. So I can divide both sides by 6.8 in order to solve for h. 6.8 Actually, let's do 31.28 divided by 6.8. And that tells me that that height, h, or de, I should say, 
is equal to 4.6 inches. And so this is 4.6. Think about what we've done. We have found the area of this, and we can find the area using two different approaches. We can use this base times this height and get 31.28, but we should also be able to use this base, dA, times this base, or times this height, 3.4, to get 31.28. Either way, the area of this parallelogram should stay consistent. It should never change. But we can find the area using two different approaches. Just like I showed you in the beginning, if I take this parallelogram and rotate it so that AB is no longer the base, but DA is, then that changes what you use for your height. And that concludes our lesson today on finding the areas of parallelograms as well as finding missing measures in parallelograms.